to the Sweet 16, 2016. Um, so my name is Maria Mumbi. I'm a fourth year law student. And these are all my colleagues, fourth years. Um, so we have the attorneys and the advocates. And this unit is law and religion. And so our professor, Santiago Negari, came up with an amazing idea for us to be able to portray knowledge or what we understand about the central case of religion through art. And this is what we've done today. And before you are the Sweet 16. So these are the 16 that were chosen from about um, 45 people who drew. So I mean, we're really artistic, guys. So yeah, welcome. So I'm going to take you through the whole process. And first, we're gonna start with a song from Jacob and John and Brian Kimeto. And they're going to sing the South African National Anthem which is um, a song that's in four languages. So let's welcome them, guys. Kosi Sigeleli Africa Malu Paganyi Su Pondo Luayo Iza Imi Tandazo Yesu Kosi Sigelela Sapuluayo, Murena Buluka, Sestava Saesu, South Africa, Sestava Jesus is Tabasa, South Africa. Kosi si geleli Africa. Malu pagani so bondo loyo. Izwa imitanda zo Yesu. Kosi si gelela tina. That was great, right? So now uh, we're going to have the first four of the Sweet 16. Are you guys excited to know who they are? Yes. Are you? Do you have a clue? No. <laughs> okay, so first we're going to have Tatenda Wangui. <laughs> We're going to have Marion Bugwa. Lisa Agutu. Abel, do you know the one more? Can you guess? Vanessa! Just to let you guys know, we're gonna have songs in between, and the songs are basically for honoring this I mean, this beautiful art. Yeah, guess what this is? Yeah, <laughs> it's a magical one from Harry Potter. Great, yeah. So, you guys, I'm holding power here. Hi, Tatenda. Hi, good morning. How are you? Would you like to show me your drawing? Yes. Uh, this right here is my drawing. Okay. Um, the flower drawing is mine. So, I love uh, farming and I love flowers. So I thought it would be a good illustration to use the things I relate to easiest and which I would be able to explain my central case of religion. So, according to me, the central case of religion is kind of like a flower. The different stages in growth of a flower or the different things that happen to a flower are the same things that can happen to individuals on the path looking for the true religion. So I'll start by the first one. The first one is a budding flower, this one right here. It's a budding flower which is basically everyone, each individual when we're born. We still have the ability to learn, we still have the ability to have um, um, uh, things written on us. But first of all I should go back uh, a bit. I chose natural law as soil. I chose natural law as soil because it's, it's natural. It exists for all of us. 
it doesn't change and a lot of our positive laws are in fact ratifications or derivatives of natural law so I, th I thought it fit to be natural law second I will point out that there's belief belief according to me is um, good upbringing which is brought about by different factors by society and by your parents and and also the fact of reason. Belief is coupled with those two aspects working together. Now belief is the manure in my in my illustration. Okay now there are options, the different things that can happen when in this plant in this um plant growth. The my central case of religion is that for the state and religion to coexist, it needs each individual rooted deeply in natural law, belief, the ability to reason, which eventually develops into a conscience. And um, I should have mentioned that the state is the oversight body for this to happen, which is what the state should do because that flower here is um, a withering flower. So a withering flower because you'll find different aspects have been reducing as we go along. So belief and tolerance have been removed. And that's an example of a um, secularist state. And in secularist states, you'll find people who want complete distinctions between the state and, and religion. So they want that separation. In the last diagram, you'll see um, when you come closer, the soil is completely destroyed there's no ability to grow that's an extremist state which is for example a failed state because the ability for the state to tolerate people to freely express themselves to freely express their religion has completely been removed for them so there's no ability to growth not even the petals can survive so isolation is what ultimately leads to extremism and secularism okay so. hi Lisa. how are you so what's all this about? It looks to me like, I mean, I'm seeing clouds and I don't know, I don't know. Enlighten me. Okay, Enlighten so me. I'll, mine is much simpler. I'll explain. So the, f the figure above is the sky oh, and so right. yeah. exactly. Yeah, and then this, this central figure is the moon. And then below the, different layers of blue this yeah. is the ocean yeah. so i'll explain this above and um you can't really see but i labeled it as true religion mm -hmm. because okay first let me start from um, the scientific so point the moon's gravitational force is what causes waves in the ocean yeah and you know that the earth has only one moon so in the same way there's only one true religion and one truth which the believers feed off of so we have the ocean which represents the believers so the gravitational pull is the truth which they all sort of gravitate towards and which they all seek yeah so the moon also represents the sovereign who carries the truth the truth being the the gravity that controls the ocean so we have the sovereign and then we have the people who are drawn to just one truth and one sovereign and then be the image below i hope you can all see that's a waterfall which represents watered down religion do i need to elaborate <laughs> so it's just a sort of diluted version of the truth so all the waters are sort of drawn to that one gravitational force but you sort of notice that they're, so, they're diluted versions of that truth and that's what the image below um, represents so for me the central case is truth and no one truth and one Hi, Maria. sovereign hello Maria yeah. how are you fine what do you have for us today so my this is my drawing uh -huh. and it is a water cycle my favorite topic yeah, in school was geography i really love geography so yeah. i thought to incorporate geography in law and religion so we have mountains we have clouds we have um evaporation and then we have the sea so and i'll help you I'll, yeah, I'll explain all that so i'll help you understand this so um evaporation is ideally considered the first phase yeah so the sun hits the water it evaporates and then it condenses into becoming clouds and then the clouds are moved by wind and then once the clouds accumulate and they are pregnant with rain then the rain um, at the on top of the mountains or wherever they will rain yes and then once they have rained then ideally you know the sources of rivers are like in the mountains and um, that we watch out in geography so 
for me this is the source of my river it's called river religion and river religion um pours into the ocean and the ocean is ocean truth so for me i thought that um when there's evaporation those are that's the act of seeking the truth and this act of seeking truth um every other man has that inclination to seek the truth it's in it's innate in all of us so once we condense um we are moved by the wind this force right and then we become the worshipers or the assembly or we become the community so ideally you don't really need um you know communities to to make sure that that is actually religion communities are form part of what ideally will end up becoming religion so we will reign the community we will reign the assembly the church we will reign and then we'll form that river religion which will ideally take us religion is a means to the truth which is the ocean so i've paint, i colored it with a different color there there's um, a smaller river and that's those are other religions it doesn't matter which religion you have at the end of the day the river which is the means to the end will take us to the truth and that's religion for me the central case of religion is the seeking the truth so it is a means to an end religion um yeah. yeah and then there's mr sun who makes us happy and the final thing is that if you can see there's so much order in this you don't necessarily need um man has never created this cycle it happens on its own and we can't control this cycle we can only influence this cycle by having that cycle then we see there's actually god so god is ideally existing in nature i just chose nature to to show us that god exists so god is also important but religion is actually a means to seeking the truth. Good. Yeah. Hey, so tell us, what? I mean, this is good. What's, what's this about? So um, first I'll start with, um, you know, I really love Bible study. Oh. So this is what was also, like I went to the priest and I talked about it. And I had to like look for inspiration because we were given this assignment and we were told you know you can get to travel so I was really really excited about it so first I went to my priest and he just told me ponder on this verse and I'll just repeat what he told me so he said and you will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water you will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water so the first thing I thought was yeah a tree that would be a good baseline to start my drawing on then I thought, okay, so it's center of religion. So what is the center of religion? What is the common point between all um, religions? This is the person. And this is where the roots emanate from. So the heart and this question mark is the natural law, moral law, the law that's written in our hearts. And the intellect, which is this question mark, the reason. As I talk about. So, um, so we have it all from the roots, and you see the soil. Like this is where the person, the person is my central case, which is so basically the soil has different conditions, and that's basically where the different conditions that you're exposed to as a child, from your upbringing, from the religion that your parents are from from the society you're born in are where now you now start to grow from and that's where i showed now the person is growing yeah. into this yeah. yeah yeah this person is growing and <laughs> developing this oak tree so as you can see like the way trees just they start off at a central part and then they start to digress through different directions so from my drawing, we have the intellect and um, the practical reasoning, which is natural law, and the law that's written in our hearts, which is represented by the gold and the silver, where they come together at the trunk of the tree. And then now someone can now choose. As they start to grow, they now start to question. Even though my mom and dad told me that this is the true way to go, this is the religion, this is what society has um made me believe is right i start to question as i search for the truth which is here here so um you see a person starting to lean towards religion or away from religion because we have the freedom from and towards religion so um religion 
is represented by this fence, which is a sort of support. So religion is, for me, a virtue which enables us to get or hastens the acquisition of virtues and the ultimate end and the good and all that. So basically, you see the sides or the branches that are leaning against the support system, which is the structure um, built by religion, are able to get towards the truth much faster. And you can see there's a lot of flourishing. That's why there's like flowers and a lot of leaves and they're super green because of chlorophyll and they're really, you know, they're just flourishing really well. As opposed to the guys who now just opt to take on reason and do away with what is innate in them, which is the law that's drawn on the hearts and natural and all that. So you see now the silver part and here the flowers are silver representing like reason only. So you see now they start withering, the branches are now falling towards the ground because you're denying a part of yourself and the way the roots basically need all the nutrients in the soil, you're denying some of the like the nutrients okay then um this side is where through revelation um people are now being forced into extremists they're now um denying their reason completely and are now that's this part is not the fundamentalists so you're being blocked from the light you're blinded you do not use your reason and that's why the branches are now yellow because they lack sunlight chlorophyll all that so this is where we have extremism, so we have fundamentalists, then the secular, then the secularists. So now, Vanessa, yeah. in light of helping me mm -hmm. grasp this beautiful concept, yeah. would you mind giving me this painting? I can just hang it somewhere. Um, no, 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 this is for me. I, I, I think I put a lot of sweat into this, so I'm going to go home with it. Okay, yeah. good job though. Thank good you. Job. Thank you. I think that was a really good session, right guys? Yeah. Like that was really good, yeah? yeah? So now we're gonna have another song by a young lady called Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie, where are you? Stephanie? <laughs> Stephanie? <laughs> let's, let's give a round of applause as she comes. If you'd be a lecturer in this school, who would you choose? Me. Yeah. If you had the choice. Dr. Malala. Dr. Malala? Nice. Does she sing? No. Well, it's not, it's not related. Okay, what are you going to sing for us today? Uh, when I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars. Oh, okay. Up to you. Hi, everyone. Hi. So, I'll sing um, When I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars. Same bed, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. Our song on the radio, but it don't sound the same. When our friends talk about you, all it does is just tear me down. Cause my heart breaks a little when I hear your name. It all just sounds like ooh. Too young, too dumb to realize that I should have bought you flowers and held your hand. Should have given you all my hours when I had the chance. Take you to every party, cause all you wanted to do was dance. Now my baby's dancing, but she's dancing with another man. My pride, my ego, my needs, and my selfish ways Caused a good, strong woman like you to walk out my life Now I never, never get to clean up the mess I made, oh And it haunts me every time I close my eyes It all just sounds like, ooh Too dumb to realize that I 
should have bought you flowers and held your hand. Should have given you all my hours when I had the chance. Take it to every party, cause all you wanted to do was dance. Now my baby's dancing, but she's dancing with another man. And although it hurts, I'll be the first to say that I was wrong. Oh, I know I'm probably much too late to try and apologize for my mistakes. But I just want you to know, I hope he buys you flowers. I hope he holds your hand. Gives you all his hours when he has the chance. Take you to every party, cause I remember how much you love to dance. Do all the things I should have done when I was your man. Do all the things I should have done when I was your man. have an interesting tattoo yeah let me just hold that for you let's just uh, you know <laughs> talk about this i love this is this does it also display the central case or no, no this is no. not the central case of okay. religion okay so what's it about oh my god it is an olive tree uh-huh which i guess is a symbol of christianity one of the many symbols of christianity ah okay, okay. when did you get it i got it a few months ago like November nine months november 28 2015. so it's like your anniversary november yeah comes like yes okay. they have a lot in common and so my hunch is that if any religion is true it will be one of the three because they have the same history and they share a lot so the painting or the drawing or the mind map was about what they share in common and then what they don't so okay i'll get, take you through it so the first the top part is that they all have a monotheistic God, which is they believe in one God only. So Christians, I mean, so this side is Islam. So there's Allah, there's God, and for Judaism, there's Yahweh. But then here there's um, Abraham. Yes, I, Allah. Will, I, will, <laughs> I will come down to that one. So the first row is the monotheistic God. Um, the sections I colored, I guess, are overlapping what they have in common. I chose yellow for God because they all believe their God is holy and the absolute holy being so the overlapping sections of god are yellow for holiness the second row was that they all believe in divine revelation and they all believe that their book is god speaking to them and that whoever wrote the book is writing the direct word of god and so christians have the bible i mean muslims have the quran christians have the bible jews have the tanakh I used purple because it's the color of royalty and so they believe that the word is from their king and this is all overlapping. The third section is that they have similar characters and these people all appear in the three books. So Abraham, so the Abrahamic religion, which means they all believe that their father was, the father of faith is Abraham. So they also believe there's Jacob in all these books, there's Isaac, there's Jesus in all these books, there's Moses in all these books and there's Adam in all these books which I guess are the founding fathers of faith after Abraham. And so they all share that in common. I chose green because I guess it's life and they believe that these stories and tales are, are about life and guide them through life, right? They don't actually believe their tales. They believe it to be the true word of God and true events, all three of them. The last part is they all have worship and congregation and holy houses. And so Muslims have mosques which I tried to draw. Christians have churches and Jews have synagogues. And so they all believe in congregation and together. So my main thing was, if these three are the Abrahamic religions and they have so much in common, I had a bar called truth. I was going to call it truth meter, but then yeah, truth, which is that the central claim, claim for all these religions is that they are 100% true, not 99%, not 80%, that they are 100% true. And so I had the truth bar, and my central claim is that whichever of these religions um, adheres closest to natural law, once you pass it through the truth bar, it will come out with 100%. I didn't fill in the percentages at the bottom, 
I put a question mark and percentages, but whichever of these three adheres the closest to natural law will be a hundred percent true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Valerie, hi. hi. You know, <laughs> you also have another tattoo. No, I don't have any. I don't know if it's an attorney thing or, uh, you know. I have two. What do they represent? So this is infinite love for my sisters. Yeah. And this represents my stand on my belief and on my faith. So I had it engraved on my arm yeah. as a constant reminder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Thank you so. have a twin sister, yes? Yes. Is she around? We didn't think we'd make it this far, so... <laughs> 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 this is on record. Yeah, okay. This is on record. Yeah, and then also she's cooking oh, somewhere. Okay. In a restaurant somewhere. Okay. So, there, is, there is something of hers around. I, no, just kidding. I, actually, yeah, she's well represented. Hint, hint. I don't know what that means, but I think we should go to the central key yeah. of religion. So tell us what your um, drawing is about. So um, my drawing is one that has... Um, a unique aspect to it. Um, I based my central case on religion on a verse that I really relate to. You wanna, you wanna the hold Bible. the one? Do you wanna use it? Yeah. Grassi. On the Bible, which is James 1, 27. And if someone here in the audience, or if you want me to recite it for you, it's cool. But it states that the most undefiled and pure of religion that is accepted to God is one where um, you attend to the orphans and the widows when at need and that you are um, you're clean from the works of the earth or from what comes from the earth so then i started off by sticking all you would think are true characteristics of a true religion and that's community worship supreme being natural law truth and justice and i deliberately stuck them on the globe but as you go up there's a nice artistic figure yeah that explains James 1 27 which is run away from the earth <laughs> to serve others so I related to James 1 27 with a theme of service so and then finally as you go up it's a sky cascading into space and that it shows the three main religions that I would say are the closest to what I think uh, is true religion but really for true religion to exist then, it would constitute a changing of these to up here. So there's a reason why I stuck them like this, so that this can be done. It would be more elegant, but alas. But yeah, so ideally my true, okay. <laughs> it's okay. My true religion is the inversion of these worlds up here. So, the first step then is service to others for me and then come in the aspects of supreme being, natural law, community, worship, love and justice which is reflected in the three religions that I have shown here which is Islam, Christianity and Judaism. Okay. So yes. Okay. Good job. Good job. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. I really like your top. Is that your favorite color? Not really because my mother's top so I just <laughs> buried it. So, yeah? Yeah. So you wanna tell us what your uh, drawing is about today? Yes. Okay. So this is my drawing. I decided to draw a tree because it's easier to draw. So now uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, so this is a religion tree. It's the brown part. And yeah, then yeah. oh yeah. This so this is a religion tree. And then the roots and the the roots represent natural law. The roots and the nutrients that come from the roots and go to the tree, trunk, whatever. So that's natural law. And then the branches are the various religions that we have. So we have Christian, Islam, Judaism, um, Hindu, and uh, Buddhism. And then the yellow part represents the societies, which means the states in the world. And then the, this reddish 
things are the fruits of religion so now my central case of religion is natural law because I believe true true religion is one that is supported by natural law and the beliefs and traditions that come uh, with the with their religion with each religion so mine is just that I <laughs> I didn't think I'd be selected so I didn't go so much into it so <laughs> that's it thank you hey Emma hi what's up I'm fine how are you I'm good uh, all right everyone hi <laughs> You know, I actually thought this was Latin, but I thought, like, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. So tell us, tell us, what's this about? All right, so my source of inspiration was the divide in the world caused by what we think is religion. But then what I was trying to depict in my drawing is that we all have something in common, which is God. So over here we have the globe and we have God and God is the one who's at the center of it all. We all derive our basic concepts from God. In as much as we might worship God differently, we all have the underlying concept of we are all worshiping God. So from my drawing, the reason why it's, div okay, this is the globe, and the reason why it's divided is that um, we think religion is at the center of it, but really it's the one that brings us close together. And if we really do not tap into, um, God and also the basic tenets, which are the um, the basic goods. We have life, we have knowledge, we have um, uh, aesthetic experience, sociability, practical reasonableness, and play. Then we really will not have a harmonious society. So what I was okay. The reason why I drew this is that we should all look into what's basic in us as human beings, which are the basic goods. We should also realize that. We all worship a God regardless of whether we worship God differently. So for me, my central case of religion was God and he's the one that brings us all together and our basic goods. Yes, and the reason why I have natural law is that it's also something that's common in all of us. So if we really exercise our religion and our understanding of God and the basic goods and natural law, then we have a harmonious society. That's basically it. I want to welcome another singer who's going to honor the Sweet 16. Very you think what today? You wanna have some questions? No. You need backup? No. No. You need me here? No. I can do the oohs and the ahs. I've been practicing. <laughs> okay, what will you sing for us? Uh, I'm singing a song called Gravity mm -hmm. um, by Sarah Bareilles. Yeah, why did you choose this song specifically for today? Because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, take the stage, Angie. <clears throat> Something always brings me back to you. It never takes too long. No matter what I say or do, I still feel you here the moment I'm gone You hold me without touch And you keep me without chase I never wanted anything so much Than to drown in your love and not feel your rain Set me free, leave me be I don't want to fall another moment into your gravity Here I am, I don't stand so tall Just the way I'm supposed to be But you're onto me and all over me Oh you love me cause I'm fragile When I thought that I was strong But you would touch me for a little while And all my fragile strength is gone Set me free, leave me be 
I don't want to fall another moment into your gravity. Here I am, and I stand so tall, just the way I'm supposed to be. But you're on to me, and all over me. Oh, I live here on my knees as I try to make you see that you're everything I think I need here on the ground. You're another friend, no foe, though I can't seem to let you go. But one thing that I still know is that you're keeping me down. Keeping me down, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, you're on to me, you're on to me, and all over me. Something always brings me back to you. It never takes too long. Thank you. My name is Salma Hamala. Mm -hmm. I'm an advocate. I come from here. <laughs> um, I didn't have breakfast. Yeah. So now you can tell us what your drawing is about. Whew. Okay. So, so as you can see, okay, so this is a torch. Yeah. And this torch is illuminating like into nature and then around the torch there are stripes like it's dark stripes to signify darkness and then you can see these are the twin towers i don't know whether you can see and this is a plane that's a 9 11 and then up here we have money we have alcohol we have books then down here i just tacked somebody's face on because i couldn't draw so if this is a board, you know those boards that have like the cutout part and then you stand behind it. So this is somebody who is standing behind it and the board, it's a priest. This is a uh, cassock, it's a priest. And then here it says church fundraiser. So this is a person who is acting like a priest and who is raising money. Okay, so to what it means, this touch here, this is natural law and practical re reasonableness. So the light that is it's illuminating, this is the natural law that is within us and the reason that we have that we use to activate that natural law and from it we can see there's revelation of God and, and you know, through nature. And then from when you're in the darkness where the torch is not lighting up, you can see these are people's ideas of what the central case of religion is. So these are fundamentalists, people who would kill in the name of religion. These are people who maybe they value money, they value alcohol, they value, you know, their education more than anything else. It's that like they're small idols and they're outside of this, you know, light. And then here we have people who use religion, but to swindle people out of their money, you know, like the way you have some churches that are just contributing money for their own uh, personal gains. So when you're outside this, when you don't want, or rather when you ignore your conscience, when you don't want to use practical reasonableness, when you don't want to put natural law into practical action, you're going to be outside this. And that is why you're going to have very many different central cases of religion. But then when you activate it, when you use it, that's why you're going to be within the light. And you're going to see God revealing himself through nature. And that is going to be the central case of religion. Hey Esther, Hi. how are you? This looks more like science to me, but um, you can you can tell us you can tell us about it. Okay. Yeah. So this is my central case of religion. So when I was um, when you got the assignment, I started thinking um, we need to represent the central case of religion in something. Okay. If you looked at it, you need to know what it is. Yeah. So I picked something that happens to us every day. Every day we wake up at home and we need to find our path to school. What if you had five other paths? How will you know which one you need to be on to get to school? 
so I used uh, the illustration of a maze so I have essentially two paths the first one is uh, the path of natural law so if you follow this path you'll be able to get to the center let me just start again so the central idea behind a maze is it's a network of paths which is formed into some sort of a puzzle and the idea behind it is to find your way so i have two paths the first one is the path of natural law if you follow this path of natural law you'll get to the center where true religion is so my idea of true religion is not as simple as um, someone would imagine it has different layers to it so i have uh, like two hands um, like someone is praying like two hands together so another aspect of true religion is worship if you see this this is one face there's another face of a lady i don't know if you can see and then a smaller face of a child so that represents community within the religion and as a and also i gave three examples of um religion the first christianity judaism uh islam and to represent the others uh that one so basically uh the idea is that this true religion is from the path of natural law and this religion uh, is in a sense uh, where God reveals himself to his uh, followers and yeah he reveals himself to his followers it's not in a sense of Aristotle and all the other philosophers the God that they were talking about and also it's not a religion where God is not present because he is present and he reveals himself to his people so that's basically um, true religion and what about the numbers? One, two. Okay, so we're done with the first path. Now the second path shows the watered down version of religion. So if you follow this path, you get to a dead end. You don't get to the center of the maze. Mm -hmm. So I've given one and two to show the different types of, of the various ways in which the religion may be watered down. So um, I gave uh, the first example was tolerance in the sense that the community or the people involved in it can allow certain things to happen leading to um, uh, for example ter ter bombings and such the legs so, <laughs> so um, yeah there's to hey, tolerance there's fundamentalism there's secularism and other examples such as sex they haven't followed the path of natural law so they've ended up at a dead end and hence that on either side of the extreme side, either fundamentalist or a secularist. Um, basically, that is it. Oh, I have no idea why I drew a heart. Honestly, it was just. The heart is the most important. Okay. And I'm not sure if I can remember the explanation I had behind drawing it. Um, but I chose um, the central case of my religion as God because if without without him no one would be questioning what is this religion that's according to me so he's the giver of life to this religion as is the heart to a being then the blood that flows in the heart is my natural law that which is inherent in everyone so that's the blood flowing in the heart. Then I have blood vessels. Those are my, I picked three religions. So those are my institutions. I had Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. So um, basically what I was saying, in whatever religion you have, be it Islam or Christianity, um, you must, adhere to the principles of natural law. You know, they are the foundation of whatever other beliefs are in it. So if you guys want to believe in a full moon or something like that, if you follow the basis of natural law, like do good and avoid evil, that can fall into being considered as true religion. Are you guys understanding? Okay. Then I have weird colored things. Those are blood clots the way your system can get blood clots so that comes to hinder the achievement of natural law 
so that interferes with your intellect and your will because you guys know your intellect is the appreciation of what is good and what is bad Sindio? and your will pushes you to seek good so this blood clots would eventually bring rise to let's say extreme practices so you'll find I will not cite examples but extreme practices yeah so when your will and intellect are interfered you drive to achieve good is interfered with Sindio. so in the long run we sit and question so is that really a religion so that's how i came up with this drawing i'm not sure if it makes sense but yeah simple and straight to the point okay thank you how are you today i'm um, well i really like your quotes <laughs> thank you so i have decided i'll give you three wishes to make your presentation easier so you can tell us anything you want anything i'll give it to you um could i request for someone to hold it for me someone to hold someone to hold <laughs> let, okay. let me do mine because you were in the last presentation another wish your one my 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 wish be be careful and the last wish lunch with santi <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay, now take us to your uh, drawing. Okay, my name is Lucy Wangari Mora. I'm a fourth year law student in the advocates class. So, my central case of religion is truth. And to push it further, I would say truth of the divine. So, um, this sun represents truth. As you all know, sun gives light, etc. etc. So, for me, the central case of religion was. Uh, truth and the reason um, and this is a, a, a person um, like worshipping so uh, I felt that like religion is a pathway for us to get to that truth and um, from the reading of uh, Finis in natural, natural Law he defines religion as one of the basic forms of human good and he says that it is the establishment and maintenance of proper relationship between oneself and the divine Therefore, um, irregardless of whatever denomination you come from, Christian, Muslim, whatever, at the end of the day, whatever religion you, you, you uh, whatever denomination you subscribe to, it should lead you to the truth. And in, in, in a situation where this particular religion or particular denomination does not give you the truth, then the principles of natural law, which are represented by the, this rays of the sun, should guide you to get that which is the truth. Yes, thank you. So next, guys, we're going to have another song by yours truly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Okay, no, I joke. So next, we're going to have a song by a first year who has a very, very beautiful name. Sandrine Iwaton. Hey, again, my name is Sandrine. I'm going to sing for the first time by the script. He's all laid up in bed with a broken heart. While I'm drinking Jack alone in my local bar. And we don't know how, how we got into this mad situation. Only doing things out of frustrations Trying to make you up, but man, this time's hard She needs me now, but I can't seem to find the time I got a new job now on the unemployment line And we don't know how, how we got into this mess This is God says, someone help us cause we're doing our best Trying to make you up, but man, this time's hard if we're gonna stop by drinking on cheap bars of wine Sit talking up all night Saying things we haven't for a while A while, yeah We're smiling but we're close to tears Even after all these years We just now got the feeling that we're meeting For the first time <laughs> She's in line at the 
fog with the head held high While I just lost my job but didn't lose my pride And we don't know how How we're gonna make it work when it hurts When you pick yourself up and get kicked to the dirt Trying to make you up a man, this time's hard We gonna stop by drinking on cheap bars of wine Sit talking up all night Seeing things we haven't for a while a while here we're smiling but we're close to tears even after all these years we just now got the feeling that we needed for the first time oh this time's a heart yeah they're making us crazy don't give up on me baby and oh this time's a heart yeah, they're making us crazy, don't give up on me, baby. Okay, so we've just had an amazing performance by Sandrine Airwarton. And now we're going to announce the last four of the Sweet Sixteen. So we have um, Alice with us. Hi, Alice. Hi. And this is her drawing. So, you can walk us through it. Okay. So, this is my central case of religion. Yeah. So, my central case is natural law. And where natural law is allowed to flourish, it leads you to the divine truth. And now this is where natural law is really allowed to flourish. These three, these four religions. So, this is Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and Islam. So, hey, Tabitha. Hi. How are you? So you want to tell us about your drawing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my drawing is pretty simple. It's the earth and different stages of the moon. So the uh, um the moon the moon gets its light from the sun. So it shines its light on the earth. So the sun is God. And depending on the degree of illumination of light, then we have different degrees of religion. So the full moon is where the light shines on the earth the most and this represents the truest versions of religion. So we have Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, um, Judaism, yeah. And then we have the different other um, stages of the moon. We have the crescent moon, the half moon. Those represent the watered down versions of religion. And then we have where um, the moon doesn't receive light from the sun. You know when that's why we have atheism. But at the end of the day, everyone in, on earth has natural laws inherent in them. So, regardless of whether or not they believe in a true God, they have um, natural law in them. And for a religion to be true religion, it has to be in line with natural law. Yeah, that's basically it. Everyone, uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Olive Mumbo. I'm from a Chinese class. Uh, um, so, for me, what inspired me was watching the 16 videos from last year. So, uh, I actually decided on uh, giving last week's class to actually stitch from writing because I'm better in writing than drawing, as you can see. Um, so, uh, that's what inspired me to draw this. Um, so, for me, based on uh, my version of the central case of religion, that would be down here. But allow me to begin from the top. So, as you can see here, there is a sun, and the sun is a source of nourishment for all, including the central source of religion. So, I am in within, outside the sun, there is pure darkness, which is like the watered down version of uh, religion, something that we, we might know or we might not know. Um, so, I saw, I took the view of a magnifying glass as uh, zooming into the world, as you can see here and uh, showing the different uh, versions or what we as uh, individuals perceive to be our version of religion. Hence, um, you would find Christianity, uh, humanism even, um, scientific science, scientific equations, um, Buddhism, Islam, uh, Judaism, um, Hinduism, and everything else which is surrounding the earth. So that is according to us as individuals, if we look at each, each person as they are, there has to be a, one particular religion that we perceive to be our form of religion. So from that case, uh, 
I came up with this as much as um, this is our what we perceive to be our form of religion there is a central case of religion which us as human beings hence the hand um, the, we need require uh, nourishment in order for life force to grow which is this tree here so whereby for me I saw it as uh, the life force for a tree to grow would be I believe water the sun and of course oxygen hence the central case of religion would grow from whatever we perceive it to be hence this is my drawing okay. our last 616 is a guy finally and he would like to introduce himself uh, yeah. I'm Kriva Yugi from Nyanza uh, long with the position and I represent um, my poster painting had to do with, with control. I'm an avid PlayStation fan and if you play PlayStation, you know that you're in control of what, what's on TV. So the four main religions all claim to be true. But the question is not which one is true, because that's a, that's a subjective question. The question is whether it adheres to the natural law principle. Now the globe signifies natural law. Um, why does it signify natural law? Because each and every person on this globe, inside of their heart, um, is imprinted in them the law um, of nature. Now, in order for one of these, in order to fulfill the criteria of making it to the, the pad, one of the buttons on the pad, um, this, these religions would have to coincide with natural law, of which I believe Christianity, Islam, and Judaism all do with regards to their principles. On this side we have arrows. Sorry, On this side we have arrows. And these arrows um, signify human law, um, law in the state, whatever. And um, they also have to coincide with natural law principles to be true and to make it onto the path. The cables that join um, the world or the globe and the path um, is, is the different means and the different revelations. Um, that people have in order to give us these religions. Yeah, so I'm taking questions after this. And then <laughs> Thank you. 
this life was meant to be sweet that the path i would walk was clear and fair but now more and more i am drawn to the shore and i long to cross over over there there's a boat that crosses over and i know the captain and he has already paid my fare when he calls me someday my face i will claim and will say Okay.